Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a BL Touch on your Corality 32-bit board, whether it be the 422 or 427. Uh, I'm using my Ender 3 Pro here as an example. It has the 422 board. Uh, the process is pretty easy, but I want to walk you through all of it end to end, make sure that you uh, know what you need to do. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Um, the community there is starting to grow and they've really been helping each other out quite a bit. So it's a decent resource for anybody needing some help. So I'm going to split this video into a couple sections. Uh, first one being uh, the physical install of the BL Touch. And then we're going to go over and grab the firmware that we need and push the firmware to the printer. And then we're going to uh, go ahead and run a level and set our Z offsets. Uh, the entire process should take... I don't know, 15-20 minutes if you're familiar with it. Uh, if you're doing it for the first time, it will take a little bit longer just to get the Z offset set right. And if you guys haven't already, uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help uh, make this channel grow. Thanks. All right guys, so because I bought a cheaper BL Touch off of Woo, it didn't come with any of the adapters and it only came with short cables. So I'm going to go ahead and slice into these cables and expand them. Uh, it does come with some um, fittings and stuff that you can use if you wanted to just plug back into it. Uh, but at that point, I'm just gonna uh, cut into it, just solder it and use heat shrink tube. I think it'll be better overall. Um, I recommend getting the kit that I have linked in the description below. Uh, that's what I used on my other printer. Um, I just saw this on Woot. I figured I'd give it a try. Uh, but if you're somebody who doesn't already have all the ribbon cables and everything else to uh, modify it, you're gonna end up spending more money than if you just bought uh, the kit that I have linked below. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this uh, off camera and then we'll start wiring everything up. All right, now that we got the cable extended, next thing we wanna do is mount the BL Touch to the bracket. So we'll go ahead and do that really quick. We're just gonna attach it as such and then use the bolts provided and uh, just kind of feed them through and then put the nuts on the top of them. And these bolts are actually way too long and I don't like that, so I'm gonna grab some smaller ones. All right, so I just grabbed the kit of bolts that I typically keep around. I think we'll be okay with an eight millimeter. Let's take a look. Yeah, eight should work fine. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And we probably won't need the nut at the top either. And then just tighten them up a little bit here. And then if you want, there's enough space up top where you can put a nut just to make sure things don't slide. So I'll go ahead and do that really quick. All right, and then I'm not gonna put them on here too tight. All right, so that's really all we have to do there. Next, let me go ahead and grab the printer. Then we wanna mount this to the printer itself. All right, so what we need to do now is take off these two screws so that we can mount this bracket right here. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, now we'll go ahead and put this on. We're gonna to wanna to mount it over the front of the carriage. Uh, so we're gonna put the bolt through. I think the stock one will be long enough. It looks like it is. So we won't have to swap that out. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna run our cable along the rest of the cables here. Uh, I'm not going to worry about trying to uh, cut these ties and feed it through here uh, just because I plan on running another um, shield or two, kind of like uh, this blue one here over it. So that's going to hide most of it. So I'm just going to run this pretty much along the same length and then use a couple zip ties to hold it in place. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna to want to uh, take off the panel around the uh, main board so that we can go ahead and connect it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. I'm just gonna take off the build plate. And then we have one screw up top here and then three on the bottom. Now make sure you don't lose these screws. Uh, I've lost the top one on my other one and I guess it's not a big deal, but more of an annoyance. 
All right, so now we'll go ahead and flip this over. And then we need to take off these screws here. All right, then we can kind of just let that hang. Uh, if you notice here, I've got the 422 board. Uh, the process is going to be the same if you have the 427 as well. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, connect the first cable. We want to make sure that our brown is connected to where it says ground or G on the board. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with our white and black. In this scenario, the black is ground. So we'll go ahead and plug it in here. All right, so now there are options if you want it to unplug the Z-stop and plug it in and plug the actual probe into that. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this video because I think you'll have to compile custom firmware. That's more if you're working with the SKR Mini or one of the aftermarket boards. I uh, just wanted to mention that briefly and let you know that it was an option. So next we'll go ahead and put our enclosure back on and then we'll go ahead and get the firmware that we need and then test everything out. All right guys, we're here at the computer and there's two things I wanted to show you. Uh, the first one is getting the firmware that we wanna use and go ahead and download that. And the second one is I wanna open up Cura and show you how to add the G29 to your machine profile. Um, that's gonna force the uh, mesh leveling at the beginning of each print. All right, so first things first, here I'm using the Ender 3 Pro with the 422 board. You, if you don't know what board version you have, you can find that by um, looking underneath the printer and kind of uh, angling through the vent and you can see it on the board itself. It's not hard to find. Uh, most likely if you have an Ender 3 Pro and it's the 32-bit board, it's going to be the 422. If you have the uh, Ender 3 V2, you probably have the 427 and it's a mix on the uh, Ender 5s as well. All right, so now if I go here, I want to go ahead and download the firmware for the 422 build. Uh, so that's going to go ahead and download now. If I had the 427 board, I would grab this firmware here. All right, so that's downloaded. Now we want to go ahead and extract it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring over my downloads folder where I download it to and then just extract it. And once that's done, we'll go ahead and go in the folder. So the original firmware we would have uploaded if we didn't have the BL Touch would have been this one right here, just the 1.0.1 original. Uh, what we want to go ahead and do is grab the BL Touch version without the transfer board. So we'll just go ahead and open this one up, and then we'll copy this binary or .bin file to our SD card, which I have here. So I'll just drag it over. Now, I made a note in the past that you have to rename this to firmware.bin. Uh, that's actually not the case if you're on the Creality firmware. But if you're going from a custom build back to Creality, you will have to do that. So if you're just on the Creality firmware or you just got the printer, just drag the file over and that's all you have to do. Next, you'll put it in the printer and then restart it. All right, now that that's done, let's go ahead and take a look at Cura really quick. Uh, here I've got my uh, default profile and just my Benchy on there. But if we go to uh, Preferences, Configure Cura, and then we go to uh, Printers, and then we want to go to the machine settings for the printer that you're using. Here I've got two different enders in here because I've been messing around. All right, so we'll go into that, and then right here underneath the G28 Home All Access, we want to put G29 um, then a space, then your semicolon, and then just make a note like BL touch or something like that. So this here is basically going to force it to go through and uh, do a mesh level before each start. Uh, so the main purpose of that is if anything has changed or got knocked around since the previous one, it kind of accounts for that and gives you a fresh start on each print. And it really only takes about, I don't know, 30 to 60 seconds to run through. So I recommend it, though I guess it, technically it is optional. All right, so let's go back over to the printer and continue the process. All right, guys, now that we've got the firmware loaded, we need to go ahead and do two things. First one is uh, just go through and do a quick bed level. And then the second one is set our Z offset. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can go ahead and power it on. Now we want to go into menu, go to control, go to bed leveling, 
and then select uh, level bed. So that's going to go through and it's going to just create a grid that it stores. Uh, I still haven't run through the bed leveling process every time that I kick off a print. Um, it's just a G29 code that's added to Cura, which I'll show you here in a second. But now it's going to go through and it's going to create the 3x3 grid. Then once that's done, we can go ahead and create uh, set our Z offsets. So I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch it in uh, real time, uh, but I still want you to see the process. All right, now that the leveling is done, uh, let's go ahead and go to Auto Home again so we can set our Z offset. So go to Prepare, uh, Auto Home. All right, now let's go ahead and go into the menu, go to Control, I'm sorry, go to Prepare. Uh, go to move axis and move Z axis. So we want to move it so that it's basically level with the paper, just like the standard leveling process. So initially, since we've got a big gap, I'm going to go with one millimeter increments. So I'm just going to go. All right, now that we're close, I'm gonna step back and go down to 0.1 millimeters. All right, so negative 3.2 is what we wanna use. So now we wanna go ahead and raise the Z axis so we can go set the offset. Uh, if you don't, when you go to set the offset, it's gonna to continue to lower it and then you're gonna have issues. So I'm just gonna bring this back to a uh, randomly positive number. That looks good. All right, so now let's go back up to the main menu and I'm um, going to go back into menu, go to control, go to bed leveling again, and then probe Z offset, and then we'll set that to the negative 3.2 that we talked about. All right, now we want to go down to uh, store settings. It's important that you store the settings because if you don't, when you power cycle the printer, uh, you're going to lose that value. All right, so now let's go ahead and kick off a quick test print to make sure it's doing what we expect. All right, so it looks like I am a little bit high, as you can see from kind of the mess here. It's not quite sticking. So now what we want to do is uh, go back in and just make slight adjustments. So go into tune, go down to probe Z offset, and then we'll make slight adjustments until it starts sticking. Which I think 3.5 looks okay. So I'm gonna kick this off again after I save this just to make sure it's okay. So stop print, go to control. Uh, store settings and then we'll kick off the print again. Alright guys, so after I made that last adjustment to the Z offset, uh, it's looking pretty good now. 
I just made the change by 0.1 millimeter. Uh, so just make little changes once you get to the point you're, that you're close. Those little changes can make all the difference. But that's pretty much all there is to it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Or you can go ahead and join my Discord server. Uh, I'm on there as much as I can be as well. And there's a decent growing community there who have been trying to help each other out. All right, guys, so that's the process to set up the BL Touch. As you can see, if you're using the Creality pre-compiled firmware, it's not very difficult. I'm going to do a video coming up soon on how to do custom compiled firmware that will work with the Creality 32-bit uh, boards. And my test print that I kicked off finished uh, overall for the first print. I think it turned out pretty good. Can probably make a couple tweaks, uh, but I'm quite pr uh, pleased with it overall. If you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.